Hello and welcome back to Darkler and Amnesia Descent. So I'm playing this on a new computer, by the way. I'm not playing this on a laptop anymore, which means I just had to run through all of the crap that I had done before. I actually did it a lot quicker. Probably because I knew what I was going for, but anyway. So we're going down to the wine cellar now that we have the key. Okay, fine. We have to manually use the key. Stone slab looked like a safety measure. It wasn't meant to be ever moved ever again. Okay. Right there. Where did the Baron go? Who cares? He left us in a wine to last us a lifetime. Or at least until tomorrow. <laughs> so those were the guys who were locked down here by uh, the researcher. I'm not sure. That's one of the ingredients that we need. So we got two out of four now. Oh my god! Wilhelm, do something! 
Except it. We're not getting out of here. How can you say that? Alexander, you piece of shit! Let us out of here! <laughs> okay. So Alexander killed him, I assume. Maybe he didn't. My name is Wilhelm, House of Gerlich. These are my final words, my confession and testament. Two years ago, I was summoned to the castle of Brandenburg. As most of the atrocity, I was curious about what this supposed knight of the order would want from me and accepted the invitation. The Baron was friendly and offered me a proposition. It dawned on me that the nature of the contract was sordid and that the reason I was chosen was because of my follies in the past and not the honours I'd been rewarded with during my time as a soldier. I was to kidnap healthy humans upon his slightest whim and do so without asking questions. In return, he would attest to my character at the royal court, advancing my position within noble society. I would like to claim that I struggled with my decision, but it came swiftly and I accepted wholeheartedly. Ever since that day, I've brought men, women, and children to Brandenburg. I can't remember the numbers, but there were maybe, perhaps, even a hundred. None of whom were ever seen or heard of from again. Okay, so either they're being murdered or they're being experimented on, and just like the people who were drinking, they exploded. Which makes me think that um, the guy who put the stuff in the drinks and then blew them up, kind of thing. Or made their insides turn something, I don't know, alien kind of thing. Tonight, the Baron invited me and my men down to the wine cellar to celebrate our work. I had my suspicions as we descended the stairs, but he insisted and joined us in the toast. The wine tasted fine and my men drank without restraint, which, if it is something to do with a drink, would screw them up completely. So begins the punishment for our sins. The Baron has locked us up and returned upstairs. Forgive me for what I have done. I was weak and fell into his diabolic ways. My men are screaming. Their skin have been pierced by their own tangled bones. Yeah. Something from the inside out kind of thing. I feel my insides revolt against their God-given nature. Blood has begun to pour from my eyes and I can no longer... See was probably the word after that. <laughs> young men fighting back. Their voices were silenced in a haze of gun smoke. Let's do this. 
Stairs are collapsed. Find a way to climb back up. Right, I think these are rocks that we've moved now. Right. So, do we need to use things? Alright, so, we stand up straight. During three days in Algiers, a sailboat was finally arranged to take him across the Mediterranean Sea to Gibraltar. Having reached British territory, it was just a matter of reserving a cabin on SS Hortensia, heading to London. It sure is dark in here. Yes, and there's a good reason for it. But you can light the lamp now if you wish. What's the reason for the darkness, that is? Stay close. Be careful not to stray. What's the reason? Why is it so dark? Pay attention, Daniel. It's important that you keep going straight and make sure not to stray. More than a month since my last entry. After the event inside the underground chamber in Algeria, Professor Herbert insisted I return to England. He said he didn't want to risk forfeiting the entire expedition lest I took a turn for the worse. An excessive decision, in retrospect. But I'm glad it turned out that way. I found my journal this morning in the haphazard collection of things brought home from Africa. Next to it, lay the broken stone orb wrapped in cloth. I tried to assemble it, but couldn't. The pieces wouldn't fit together, as if they weren't from the same object. Could I have imagined it all? Was there ever a complete orb? this journal, even though it was intended for my journey to Africa. This must be something very important. I just know it. 
I've taken it upon myself to piece the orb back together, but it's been more difficult than one might think. The pieces are behaving strangely. They seem to change color, shape, and texture, but ever so slightly. Yesterday, I took careful measurements and notated any significant markings. Today, I confirmed my suspicions. They were changing. I was terrified and rushed off to see the finest geologist in London, Sir William Smith. I approached the subject with care and we discussed how rocks change form. He told me about the nature of glass, how it eventually collapses on itself, like ice slowly melting over the course of centuries. Smith eased my mind a bit, but I can't escape the feeling that these shards have otherworldly properties. My sanity is dangerous. Oh shit. Sure. 